Hello and welcome to Painting with a Scientist. I know the first thing you're probably wondering is where is the blue wig? The blue wig is a little bit of a mess right now. I'm going to I'm going to fix it by Friday. But today it's just regular science mom and we're going to be talking about neurons. Welcome to you if you're watching the replay and a quick welcome to those who are in our live stream right now. Hello to Philip, to Jenna, to Tiny, Tina, sorry, Philip, Queen Donut, Hey, it's Corgi, Dominic Deepa, Space Queen. It is very good to see you guys here today. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to be painting a neuron. And if you haven't heard of neurons before, let me tell you, they are one of the most fascinating cells in your body. Neurons are the main thing that make up your nervous system. And if you would like to paint along with me with the outline that I posted online, it's a free outline. You can find it at patreon.com slash science mom or you can just paint along freestyle. And as always, you don't have to be limited to paints. You can use crayons, you can use markers, you can use anything that you would like. I'm gonna bring you a little bit closer and bring the view just a little lower so you can see a little bit better. But I am curious, let me know what you guys think about how signals are sent. Have you ever wondered about this before? You know that your brain is connected to nerves that run throughout your body, but how does your brain tell your hand to wiggle your fingers? How do your fingers tell your brain that they're touching something cold if they touch ice? So let me know in the chat if you have an idea. How does that happen? And then we'll get right down to talking about neurons. I see Space Queen says that a neuron sends information, and that is exactly right. A neuron is used to convey information. And special welcome to Nerding for Nature, who is moderating our chat right now. So thank you so much for joining us. And I see um, there was another, I saw someone else saying something about neurons, how Deepa says that information is sent through neurons. That's exactly right. Ooh, I like this one. Electrical signals. Electric signals are an important part. And we have a messenger says sends the messages. Oh, these are some good things I'm seeing in the chat. And Ashley says, where's the wig? At the beginning, I announced that our wig got a little bit, had a little bit of an issue this last weekend, and I need to be able to fix it. So I'll have the wig again on Friday. All right, your brain is able to send information to your hands. Like when you think to yourself, all right, I wanna wiggle my fingers and you wiggle them, there's information being sent from your brain to your fingers. And if you touch something wet, like I put my fingers into my bowl here and now my fingers are wet, I can feel that they're wet. And the way I feel that is by information from the skin and the nerves in my skin going all the way up to my brain. And the neurons are the way that information is passed. It's a combination of electrical signals and chemical reactions that are taking place. And we'll talk about that now while we paint our neuron. I gotta say, I think that neurons are some of the most beautiful cells in existence. They just have a really cool, almost a shape kind of like a plant or a tree. So first, I'm gonna paint my background. And you can paint yours any color you would like since we are painting a neuron and neurons are so small and they really don't have that much color in real life, I'm just having fun and I'm gonna go really bright and colorful for this one. You can paint your background anything that you would like. And I did see a question in the chat about where to submit art prompts. You can share them on Instagram. You can um, put your art on Facebook in the album that is pinned at the top of the page or you can email it to art at science.mom. So I am mixing up kind of a, a yellowish orange color and that's gonna be my background. And I'm just gonna streak this across the entire background here. I'm gonna get it nice and nice and wet so we'll cover a little bit more distance. And here we go. Now in your body, the neurons exist in special special sheaths, they're kind of bundled together. But the, the cytoplasm is the fluid that is around your cells in your body. 
And cytoplasm actually does have like a little bit of a yellowish color to it. So that was sort of my inspiration for this salmon colored background that I'm doing. But you can make yours any color you want. And I'm going to try and be a little bit lighter and not quite as much paint as I get close to my neuron. But if I color over the lines a little bit, I don't worry about that. That's not a problem. There are not, there's not just one type of neuron in your body. You have lots of different types and they all have different receptors. Have you ever wondered why it is that you're able to sense different things? Because if you think about it, the part of your, the ability you have to, to hold your hand over a hot stove and to feel the heat and feel, ooh, that's, that's heat. That is very different than being able to touch a surface and tell that it's sandpaper that you're touching, that it's rough. You have different types of neurons that perform different jobs all throughout your nervous system, but they have a lot of similarities. And one of their biggest similarities is this cool structure that they have. I've just got to get a little more paint now because I kind of ran out. So the structure that they have is really pretty impressive. A neuron has a nucleus. That's what this part right here is. And we'll talk about that more in just a minute. And it also has this long part called the axon. And the information in the neuron always goes from here, where the dendrites are, this big part, over to here. And they're all connected to each other so that a signal can go from one neuron to the next, to the next, to the next. Getting more of my background color ready. And then I'll finish out my background. And like I said earlier, you can make your background any color you want. You don't have to use the salmon color that I'm using. You can make this as bright and colorful or as subdued and quiet as you would like. It's your painting. And I will say, while we're getting our background ready, um, I, put, I, I did a longer post on, on Instagram and Patreon or in on Patreon, Instagram, and Facebook this weekend, just about how sometimes, and I don't know if you guys are like I am, sometimes I'll be feeling like, oh man, I'm worried about something, or I'm kind of stressed, but then I'll think, well, I shouldn't feel bad, because other people, other people are in a worse spot, and I did a post just about how your heart is, your heart is still hard, and if you're having a hard time, it's, it is okay. It's okay to feel sad or to, to feel disappointed. We're kind of living in crazy times right now. And I need just a little more paint. Oh, and quick comment here I want to display. Lenaya says neurons are a component of the nervous system, includes both the brain and the spinal cord. The brain and the spinal cord are certainly our most important components of our nervous system. And then branching out from our spinal cord, we have so many other small systems of neurons that are connected. And they go all throughout our body. Anywhere that you have sensation, anywhere that you can feel that's you're going to have neurons there. So you have them all throughout the outside the surface of your body, but you also have them all throughout the inside of your body too. And they are the main way that we send information from one part of the body to another. Now that I've got my background just about finished, it's time to decide on the colors for our neurons. And we have three main parts to our neuron. We have this, this big part here that has the nucleus which is called the, the cell body. And these little things that are kind of coming off as branches from that nucleus are called dendrites. And this is the information receiving part of the neuron. It's gonna be in contact with other neurons. And when they send it a signal, it's gonna receive that signal. 
and then it passes it along this way. So there we have our cell body and the dendrites. And then these right here are called Schwann cells. They're extra cells that cover the big cell of the neuron and they protect the axon so that then the signal can get over here to our the end of the axon, to our little terminals. And then it will pass the signal on to another neuron. And I think blue would be a fun color for our, for our neuron. So I'm going to get, get my brush and I'm gonna mix up some blue. And I want my blue to be a little bit greenish just for fun. So we'll end up with a little bit of like a, a turquoise-like color. But your neuron can be any color that you would like. And the first thing to do is to paint in this main part of our neuron. And then we're gonna go out and get those dendrites. And they really do look kind of like tree roots, don't they? The way that they, they spread out. They remind me quite a bit of the pattern that you see with roots or branches. <clears throat> and it's kind of, you know, just like roots and branches need to be gathering sunlight, gathering nutrients, our dendrites are all about gathering information from other parts, other neurons. So it makes sense for them to have this shape. And I'm just gonna draw out kind of roughly following this outline that I made. <clears throat> Excuse me. To fill in my, my dendrites. And if you haven't yet picked your colors, I will say that having a darker color for your neuron than your background makes it a little bit easier to see these guys. They're just a little bit more visible. So if you did a very dark background, then you might want to do a little extra, an extra coat or two to make sure that your dendrites show up. Now, if you look at the molecular level, like what is really happening when you have a nerve send a signal, a lot of it has to do with what are called neurotransmitters. So you have calcium and ion. You have calcium ions and sodium ions. You have these ions that can go across membranes and you can get different concentrations of ions on different sides of the membranes. And that's really kind of what happens. That's how these signals are being sent. But different neurons have different types of transmitters. And that gives us some of the variety with how some neurons can detect one thing and other neurons can detect a different thing. And they can send slightly different signals. Just one more dendrite here to, to paint. And my brush is a little bit feathered at one end, makes these thin ones just a little tricky, but that's all right. There we go. And bringing my other dendrite down in to join this one. Connecting them all together. There we go, we've got a happy little family of dendrites all connected to this main cell body here. But this cell body and these dendrites are all connected over here through the axon, through this long part. So whatever color you have for this part, you wanna have the same color over here because this is all one cell. These are all connected. So I'm gonna get a little more of this blue paint and then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna bring this paint down here and get these ones all colored as well. Oops, my paper is just a little wet, so they were sticking a bit. It's really kind of amazing to think that so much of what you see and hear and experience and feel has to do with sodium and potassium. 
because so much of the information when you get down to it and you really want to know, okay, like what exactly is going on? A lot of it has to do with moving, moving these tiny little ions of sodium <coughs> and potassium, moving them across the little channels that you have at the end of these nerve cells, which is kind of cool. There we go. All right. And now it's time to paint the cells that cover this sheath here, our Schwann cells. So I'm going to get a different paintbrush and a different color. And we also need to pick a color for our nucleus. Can't forget the nucleus. The nucleus is a very important part of the cell. And fun fact. Did you know that there is one type of cell in your body that does not have a nucleus? Does anyone know what it is? Type it in the chat if you know what it is. And no worries if you are, if you're painting slower than I am, remember you can always just pause the video. And the answer is red blood cells. Red blood cells don't have a nucleus. That's why they have kind of a donut shape. And you might be wondering if <clears throat> red blood cells don't have a nucleus, then how do you get more red blood cells? Because the DNA in the cell is super important for sending signals or to the cell to know how the cell should act. And it's also essential for cell division and making a new cell. Yep, Space Queen's got it, red blood cells. And the reason red blood cells don't have a nucleus is because they really are just oxygen delivery machines. But in the bone marrow, where red blood cells are made, you have, you have cells that have nuclei down there in the bone marrow. All right, I put together some red for our nucleus, and then I decided, eh, I don't think I want a red nucleus. I'm feeling like a green nucleus would look better. So I'm gonna do some green instead. And if you ever do that when you're painting, where you just kind of change your mind all of a sudden, that is A-OK. -okay. So we're gonna do a green nucleus. Rinse off my brush here, grab a little green. And here is the nucleus of our main axon, the main part of our nerve cell. And we'll go ahead and we'll paint the nuclei of our little Schwann cells as well. But then our Schwann cells, I'm going to do make those purple just for fun. Go get a little bit of white here to lighten up my purple. And then we'll be all set to paint our Schwann cells. Now when nerves send signals, they send them incredibly quickly. And it's really kind of amazing to think about all of the information that is being sent and recorded in your body right now. I've often wondered, um, oh, and I see Beth asked, is, is it acrylic or watercolor? You can paint with any type of colors that you would like. I'm using acrylics, but I always say at the beginning, you can use crayons or markers if you'd like as well. You don't have to, you don't have to limit yourself to acrylics, anything that you would like. But yes, acrylics is what I'm using. So I've often wondered if everything that's happening in your body that's involuntary, all of the, the systems and the signals and everything that's going on, if all of a sudden, if you had to be in charge of all of that, would you be able to do it? Would you be able to keep your heart beating at the rate it's supposed to be beating, to have you know your brain sending out all the signals to regulate like the hormones in your blood and everything else? And it's such a complex and huge job. I don't know if it would be possible. So thankfully, a lot of what happens to needs to happen in our body, a lot of it happens without us even knowing about it. And a lot of that information is sent through these neurons. And it's sent really quickly. If you guys were watching um, our math and science show earlier today, Quarantine, you saw that we did a little fun little test where you take a ruler and you have someone hold their fingers on either side of it and then when they see you drop the ruler they try to catch it before it falls through their fingers and falls to the ground and the signal has to go from their eyes 
so the part of their brain that controls processing vision, and then that those neurons there have to send a signal to the part of the brain that is in charge of movement and tells your body how to move. And then those neurons have to send the signal all the way down to the fingers to say, close the fingers and grab the ruler. And all that information, all those millions of cells, they're able to send that signal so quickly that most of the time you can catch the ruler before it falls. That's kind of an amazing thing. Now, once you've painted your, your neuron, if you want, you can do just a little bit of touch up, sort of putting in some little streaks here and there. If your background was like mine and was just a little bit, a little bit messy and not getting quite all the way there, but you can also leave it with some, some white. That's just fine too. It's one of the fun things about painting is that there are no, there are no rules saying you have to paint a certain way or that you have to color a certain way. You have the freedom to do it however you would like. And I always give myself the permission to make plenty of mistakes when painting. If I go outside the lines or if I accidentally, you know, mix colors that I didn't want to mix or didn't expect to mix, I just say that's part of the process. It's a happy accident, a beautiful oops, whatever, whatever you want to say. And then I'm just going to touch up a little bit up here. And there you have it, a very simple introduction to the neuron, one of the most important and interesting cells in your body. All right. I'll step on back here and... I know this one, this one was a little bit shorter than we than we typically go, but just real fast, I'll see if anyone has any questions and thank you for joining me. Thank you to those of you who are watching live, those who are watching the replay, appreciate it. Great question here from Space Queen. She asks, what are smaller than atoms? And the answer is um, the subatomic particles, electrons, Neutrons and protons, those are all smaller than atoms because atoms are made up of those molecules. And then even smaller than those, you have things like quarks, bosons. There are all sorts of very strange subatomic particles. Hey, it's Corgi, says, not even done with the background. Don't worry about that. This is not a race. And the nice thing about painting along with the video is that you can pause or you can go back and rewind you don't have to paint at the same speed I do. You can always paint or color or, you know, draw with markers. You can always do it at your own pace. Oh, and great question here. Can you tell me what they're called so I can label them? Yes, definitely, definitely. In fact, I will write them down on this paper so you can see how they are spelled. So one of the main parts here we have is the axon. That is A-X-O-N, axon. And that's the part that runs all the way through here, through the middle of the Schwann cells. And the ones that I colored purple, and you know what, I'm gonna look up and just make sure I spelled that right. I think it's one end. Um, it could be two ends. It's two ends. The Schwann cells go around the axon. They cover the axon. And there are a whole bunch of them here. Those are my little purple and green guys covering up the axon. And then dendrites. The dendrites, spelled D-E-N-D-R-I-T-E-S. And again, you can definitely pause this if you want to take a closer look or catch that. Those are these branches that come out all over from this main part. And then the cell body or the soma, whoops, cell body or the soma, that's the main, the main round part here where you have the nucleus of the, the nucleus of our neuron. And then right down here, you have the axon terminals. So that would be another thing if you wanted to be labeling your drawing to show the parts of the nerve cell that you learned. The axon terminals are those little kind of bumps right there at the end. And when information comes into a neuron, it enters through the dendrites. So you'll have neurotransmitters and little signals. You'll have sodium and potassium going whoosh from one side of the membrane to another. 
and that sends the signal through the axon and then to those terminals, and then they pass it on to another neuron. And that's the way information is sent through the nervous system. All right, we are, we are done, guys. I just want to say thank you, um, Faith and Karen and Claire, Space Queen, Porter, AJ. Thank you so much for joining us today, Gianna, Gupta. Oh, can I write it on the painting? Um, I'm not going to write it on my painting, but you can definitely write it on yours. Definitely write it on yours. So thank you, Karen, Shweta, and everyone for coming. Special thank you to Nerding for Nature and Science Mom Liza for joining us today. And I will see you again tomorrow. Bye, everyone. Bye, Deepa. Bye, Heather. Bye, Molly.